you, you've mentioned a few things today. You've talked about perseverance. You've talked about learning from your mistakes. You've talked about the importance of people. Um, you've talked about ever getting all your people involved in the sales process. So, you know, here we are, a bunch of business owners. We're going to walk out of here. And after this, we're going to have a little bit of networking. We're going to have a few drinks. We're going to be feeling good, feeling motivated. So, you know, again, thinking back with the work that not only you've done with your company, but also with the work that you've done helping other entrepreneurs, what, what would you say that we should all do tomorrow when we get in the office, you know, hopefully we have some ideas from today. What should we be doing tomorrow? What should we be thinking about the next 30 days in terms of, hey, we're people that want to take our business to the next level? The first thing you should do is call our company and send us all your boxes. <laughs> Directly after that, um, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Directly after that, what you should re really do is you have to think of where you want to be in the next five years where you personally want to be in the next five years. And I'll, I'll just tell a story. I've told it a number of times about Michael, who came to me, and he had a small family business, a trucking business in New Jersey that did a million two in, in sales. And he came to me and he said, I want my business to do, uh, why are you here, Michael? He says, well, in the next five years, I want my business to do $20 million. And I said, why? And he said, well, you know, I'm only earning $60,000. I want to earn $120,000. I have three kids and a wife and I have a really small house, and last year I took off three days. So I said, okay, you know, I thought about it, and I said, why don't you go home and ask your wife what she wants and come back. And he came back in a week, and he said to me, well, here's the deal. He says, my wife wants the same things, but in a little different order. It'd be real nice to have more money. It'd be real nice to have a bigger house, but, you know, um, your kids are, don't see you. You're missing them growing up. So she liked that first, and maybe the money second, the house third, or either way around. So we sat down and I said, Michael, that's your life plan for the next five years. So your business plan, you want to go from 1.3 to 20 million, and your life plan, you want to go from um, not having any time off to having two or three weeks off to having a house uh, double the size and earning twice the amount of money. Well, you know, you can't do both. Because if you think you're working hard now, wait till you try to get to 20 million bucks. You know, forget those three days. You won't need a bigger house because you won't have a wife and kids anymore. So, you know, so, so, so the point of the thing is that they're both in conflict. Here's your business plan. Here's your life plan. And if you try to accomplish both of them, they're both going to fail. So we decided as Mike wanted to do his life plan. So we looked at his life plan and what would it take to do that life plan. And it was real simple. All he had to do is go from a million three three million dollars in five years. I saw Michael uh, uh, five years and six months later. His business was doing 3.6 million dollars. He shut his cell phone off at 5.30 at night. He had taken three weeks off and was the happiest guy I ever saw. And his business was about to do five million dollars a year after that. So what I suggest you do is you go home and why are you doing all this? Where do you want to be in five years? And then sit down and work your business plan around that plan. So let me ask you, based, Michael finally got his life plan and his work plan settled, straightened out, right. consistent. What did he do then to grow his million from, from two, his business from two to five million? I mean, obviously not making it specific just to his business. No, you have to sit down. You have to get. Uh, uh, you have to be outside of your business to make plans. In other words, you can't have the phone ringing every day. You can't have everybody pounding on your head. Uh, my suggestion would be take a weekend off with your spouse or somebody you have. Get a good consultant. I don't believe in consultants, but some of them are pretty good. You know, and make plans to get there. You're just not going to get there because you want to get there. You have to grow within your own resources. You have to understand what your resources are. You see, most entrepreneurs, uh, uh, um, what they do, they're over-optimistic. All of us, we're over-optimistic. The first thing we think we can do everything, well, we can't do everything. You have to make a realistic plan that you can get to. And so talking on an individual basis would be an easier way to do it. But you have to be realistic. You have to do it outside of the scope of what you're doing, meaning don't do it when you're sitting in your office, when your kids are on your lap, when your wife's having you, whatever distractions you have. You have no distractions. Go wait somewhere for a weekend. And where do you start? Do you start with looking at the competitive market? Um, do you start looking at your employees? It, it depends on what business you're in. It's, it's really hard to give a universal answer to that question. It depends how much cash you have to grow. It depends what your goals are. 
You have to sit down, do your life plan first, then you do your business plan, and then see if it's realistic, if you can attain those goals. You have to be uh, reasonably optimistic, not unreasonably optimistic in your goals.